Hi. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ethan Ling from uh, IBM, and standing beside me are Dr. Teng, uh, Qi Ming Teng, and uh, Dr. Hu, Yan Yan Hu. They were both from IBM Research Lab. And in this talk, we are going to present the deep dive of Selling Project. And we are going to talk about why did we start Selling Project, and uh, what, what is this service is about, and um, where we are today, and where we are heading in the future. So the first part is, why did we start Selling Project? Back in 2013, uh, we have some requirements from our customers uh, to provide some uh, high availability solutions for their uh, virtual machines. And then we start a research project uh, to investigate how to do it in OpenStack. And besides the high availability solution, and we also looking into the auto scaling and the high availability uh, and the load balancing technologies. And, and heat and accelerometer were both into our field of vision. And they were both incubation project back then, but they all sound promising. And heat provides the auto scaling group resource and the scaling policy resource and the HA resulter resource to build up the high availability solutions, auto scaling solutions. And together with the Selimeter, and we, it might be the solution that we can provide to our customer. So uh, we start to investigate the heat and the Selimeter. And we list some user cases that we need to cover. As you can see here that uh, not all of them passed some of them are still not covered by heat and the uh, cellometer. And we also did some uh, analysis between the, uh, analyze, uh, between the gaps of the uh, AWS way and the OpenStack way, uh, how the load balancing work and how to monitor the health of the virtual machine and how to recover the failure of virtual machines and how to do a cross availability zone policies. And by doing so, we found some defects in heat and we try to fix them. The first thing that we need to fix is the hierarchy problem uh, in heat. Uh, we need to split the codes of AWS auto scaling group and the OpenStack auto scaling group. And when we try to fix that, we found that it is not an easy job. And we learned something that we didn't know before. During our job on the heat, and we learned a simple truth that is, heat is just about orchestration. And heat team wants to focus on orchestration itself instead of something new or something else. Uh, so. By orchestration, heat can be seen as a compiler. It compiles a structural definition of open stack resources into the real objects. And a an stack update action can be seen as a recompile. So the auto scaling is a big problem in heat because it is based on AWS design. But Auto scaling is not part of cloud formation on AWS. And it cannot fit the variable requirements from the private cloud. It is a big problem on its feet. And, and the heat team also aware of this problem. And they try to work on the auto scaling implementation back in 2013. Uh, they, there were proposals about a new design of auto scaling. And they, you can find the links in, in here about the details. They registered several blueprints for the auto scaling new design, and they were all approved. 
back in 2013 because it is an important uh, feature that uh, required by our by customers. Uh, let's see what they want to achieve. All these things. If you go through all these work items, you will see it is a huge effort and a big change to hit. They want to implement a new API for the auto scaling and a new DB schema and a client and even a new engine for the auto scaling. What does it look like? It looks totally like a new service. It can be moved out of heat. And by moving out of heat, we, we have several benefits. First, the incoming codes cannot impact the stability of heat. And we can, we can pull the whole thing, uh, stand up quickly. And uh, because our customer cannot wait too long for the code review, you know. So uh, during the Paris summit, we talked to the heat team about it, and then we start working on this. So when we build the Sunlink project from scratch, we thought to ourselves, what do we really need? Do we need a resource pool? Yes, definitely and we call it cluster in Sunlink project. And the resource in the resource pool, we call it a node. Now we have a cluster and a node. We also need a policies that can be attached to the cluster, like a scaling policies. It tells the cluster how to do the scaling. So, <clears throat> so we build these functions step by step. First, we build the functions to create and manage a resource pool. And then we make the size of the cluster scalable. And then we automate the scaling operations. Now we have a auto scaling group. Until now, it seems that we have an advanced auto scaling group in our services. But when we building the capability of managing a resource pool. We found that it is a important piece that is missing from the open stack. In other words, if we have a generic clustering services with auto scaling, auto healing, load balancing support, it will be a useful scenario of a resource pool to the open stack. And we found that all these advanced features are independent from each other. Like a cluster can be for the HA purpose with or without the auto scaling support. And it can also be load balancing even without auto scaling. And by regarding the services that we can manage, we can in theory Managing any homogeneous services in the in the open stack in a resource pool. When we found that, we feel very excited because we know that we are doing something that is, is really really important or useful to the open stack, and that's why we start Sunlink project. And with that, I'm handing over to. Dr. Teng to give us an introduction of the Sunlink design. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Ethan, for the background introduction. So I'm giving you uh, all a quick int intro of the Sunlink service design. As you can see from this picture, uh, the whole Sunlink project can, uh, comprises several components. It's not very complicated. We have a sending client talking to the sending API component using REST uh, APIs. And uh, the API then talks to the sending engine uh, via RPC. Uh, in this, de uh, this design, uh, uh, we, we are enabling multiple engines to, to serve user requests so that the scalability in future won't be a big uh, concern. 
we also invented some new concepts here um, to make sending a more generic clustering service. Uh, that's the profile concept and the policy concept. A profile is actually um, a template you can use uh, to tell Sendlin um, how to create, delete, update an object. Um, that object can be a Nova server, for example. It can be a heat stack. So if it can be a heat stack, it means virtually we can manage any resource types heat uh, is supporting today. So uh, that's a big advantage we are taking from heat. We are, we are not supposed to reinvent every wheel. So that's the, one of the key design points. And uh, to make the uh, service more useful, we also uh, uh, develop some policies uh, that can be applied when you are managing your, your resource pool. We call them uh, clusters. Um, this page, I'm showing you what kind of uh, profiles and policies we are implementing today. And some are still uh, to-do items on our agenda in the uh, Newton cycle, maybe even for the future. Um, for profiles today, we have uh, already supported uh, Nova Server and HeatStack. Uh, that's the main profiles uh, built in today. And uh, there are some people uh, trying to help us uh, provide a bar metal profile so that sending can be used to manage physical nodes. And uh, we have some uh, collaborations with, uh, with university st uh, interns. They helped us um, uh, build a prototype uh, using sending to manage container clusters. Uh, those are really some very smart students. They got this job done in three weeks. So we had a demo back in Tokyo Summit. Uh, we also made that uh, container cluster auto scalable as well. That was a um, very interesting work. Uh, but it, it's still uh, yet to be integrated uh, into the uh, master branch uh, of the senior service. Uh, speaking of policies, today we are providing um, deletion policy, for example, placement policy. Uh, for example, you want to have your clusters deployed across multiple regions, multiple availability zones, you can do that. And you can set affinity uh, uh, properties uh, using uh, uh, some of the policies. Uh, certainly, we will we provide scaling policies, allowing to specify many details uh, if you are trying to scale your clusters in a very uh, customized way. And there are some other uh, policies still under development. Uh, for example, the health management policy that will be one of the key uh, feature we want to uh, uh, deliver in Newton cycle. Um, the load balance is almost ready. Uh, we don't have support to LBA as V1. We started from V2 directly. Um, so that's the policy and profile abstraction. Um, this page is very complicated, <laughs> maybe. So, but it's, uh, it's showing uh, us um, some key design considerations we have in Sydney service. Uh, the core components as shown in the diagram are the green boxes, the Sydney API, and the Sydney engine. That, those are the core components of the Sydney server. Um, all the other components are plugins. So. Uh, for example, if you want to extend any service to manage things other than heat stack or Nova server, you can just plug in your own profile. Um, in that profile, you can uh, just tell Sydney how to uh, create or operate your your, your resource uh, as a uh, as a node um, to make the whole thing. Uh, customizable, flexible, whatever. Uh, we really have uh, those kind of requirements from our users. Uh, we have um, isolated the, the driver side. So, so by that I mean, today we are talking to OpenStack via OpenStack SDK. 
And that is the only dependency we have on OpenStack. Uh, if you change that driver uh, into something else, certainly you can manage your own cluster of integers, flows, or whatever. Maybe pass components, web applications. It's, a, it's, it's all possible. So that's a, a, a another feature. Uh, the, the upper right corner, uh, there is uh, an abstraction called receiver. Sometimes uh, we don't believe making a service too smart is the right choice. So uh, our design policy is to make the service capable of reacting to whatever external event alarms. It could be, for example, a tsunami alarm, monastical alarm, Zabbix, Nigels, whatever. Uh, we know there there are uh, people who don't like Xenometer for whatever reasons. Uh, maybe they have their own data center monitoring systems. Um, but so in that case, you can still trigger some um, cluster operations using the uh, receivers we provide. And you, uh, via receivers, you can trigger whatever uh, operations on your cluster, for example, scale in, scale out, even check and recover, those kind of things. We are making th the whole thing very uh, flexible. Um, I think that's all for this page. Um, just gave you everyone a look and feel what are the operations we, we support today. For clusters, node policies, and uh, profiles, we support create uh, CRUD, all those operations. Uh, but for cluster, there are many more uh, convenience uh, methods, such as scale in, scale out, and resize, all those kind of things. You can manage your cluster membership directly. Uh, we tried this previously using HIT, but um, HIT only provides one verb that stack update. Uh, uh, sometimes we run into some problems. Uh, so that's uh, some lessons we learn and we will try to avoid today in, in, in sending. Um, here uh, you can see um, uh, from sending a client uh, command line interface, you can do a lot of things. You can manage your profiles, uh, your cluster node, you can manage your cluster membership all through the uh, command line interface. And we also have a, a sending dashboard project that's um, Horizon plugin is still uh, under uh, development. Um, so uh, interacting with sending service is really uh, not that uh, difficult. Uh, here's something more, how to uh, operate uh, policies and the cluster policy bindings. Uh, we do enable you to attach policies to clusters, detach them from your cluster. Even a policy is attached to a cluster, you can dynamically enable and disable them. For example, HA policy is cool, but sometimes it's annoying. Uh, so uh, those kind of features we are, we are, we are providing uh, with cluster policy bindings. And other useful operations such as um, you can do cluster resize directly using command line or through the Horizon plugin. Um, the other um, operations such as you can check the, the actions, background actions, asynchronous actions uh, that were uh, forked from your interaction with the API. And you can check events, what happened to your cluster, your node. So you, you actually don't want to look at the, the service log file. It's huge. Sometimes you cannot find what, uh, what are the root, root causes of uh, some failures. So that's... Um, um, uh, I'm showing you... Uh, you uh, one example uh, command, uh, for example, the cluster resize operation. Uh, this uh, command, for example, has been carefully designed to support many uh, variants. You can change your cluster size uh, by capacity, by uh, percentage, or you can 
uh, specify an absolute number uh, you want the, want, want the cluster to be. Um, sometimes maybe you want to scale in or scale out your cluster, but uh, uh, there are mean size or max size constraints on that cluster. So the service may get confused, should I do it or should I reject it? So uh, in that case, you can specify, um, uh, for example, the strict or best effort way. This uh, uh, also so from some customer uh, requirement uh, we are supporting. Sometimes uh, along with the size adjustments, you, you, you want to tune the mean size constraint or max size constraint. Uh, for example, during weekend days, uh, early in the morning, you want to increase your cluster size. Then uh, with auto scaling, no requests coming in yet, the size drop down quickly. So in that case, you can raise the mean size constraint and to keep the, the, the water level uh, at a uh, certain degree. So um, with that, I'm passing to my colleague, uh, Yan Yan, uh, who can give us um, a, a quick view of what we have done during the uh, Mitaka cycle and what's on our place uh, in the coming cycle. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, okay. Uh, so this picture shows uh, uh, the journey of the Selim project in the last 16 months. And uh, actually, the first line code was committed uh, in uh, December 2014. Actually, uh, we initiated the uh, repo of Selim project in China Research Lab of IBM. And uh, four months later, uh, we was we were accepted by uh, OpenStack community, community as a Stackforge project uh, with both Sinling uh, client and the Sinling service. Uh, and then uh, in May 2015, uh, we joined Vancouver OpenStack Summit and updated the project status to hit uh, core team. Uh, as introduced by Ethan before, uh, that the first goal of Sinling project is offloading the uh, or scaling functionality from HIT. So it is very, very important for us to uh, listen to the voice from HIT core team. And uh, we are very appreciated for those suggestions they gave us. And um, uh, in August 2015, another Sinning sub-project, Sinning dashboard, was initiated. And uh, it provides more intuitive and uh, either way for any user to manage cluster resources uh, managed by Sinning. And, uh, then uh, in November 2015, we joined the Tokyo Summit. And uh, uh, in that summit, we gave a presentation about how to integrate Sinling and Magnum uh, to support container auto scaling. Uh, and uh, just uh, after the Tokyo Summit, we proposed the application to join the Big Tent uh, because we believe uh, we are doing the right thing and we hope more people can join us uh, to make Sinling better. And uh, great news that we succeed. Uh, we got the approval from TC, and uh, the TC uh, think that uh, uh, cluster management is an important feature that OpenStack needed, and uh, uh, we are on the right track. So I think uh, this is the most important milestone we have achieved uh, at over that time. And uh, in, in, in January this year, uh, we hold the first mid-cycle meeting in Beijing, China. Uh, the whole team sit together to discuss some important uh, topics. And uh, also we invite some customers, for example, China Mobile, which is, uh, uh, which is one of the largest uh, uh, telecom operator in the world. And also, for example, Jingdong, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, online retail in China. Uh, and uh, we, we, we believe that it's important to listen to the voice from the customer. Uh, we want to understand uh, the problem they have met and uh, the pain they have uh, when, when uh, using OpenStack environment, especially when managing cluster resources. Uh, and we got a lot of important suggestions from them. And uh, now we are here in Austin Summit with our, uh, with our first formal release. And uh, we also publish the documentation for both user and uh, developer. And uh, we also provide some examples uh, for some you know, uh, uh, typical use cases to help end user to understand and uh, to know how to use Sinling to manage cluster resources in OpenStack environment. 
OK, in this page, we list some <coughs> important features we have finished the Emitica cycle. Uh, the first one is about API refactoring. Uh, actually, we made some important changes about uh, Selenium API interfaces in Emitica cycle uh, to make uh, the Selenium API interface strictly conform to the guide uh, from OpenStack API workgroup. Uh, we believe this is very important uh, to keep our API interface consists with all other OpenStack services. Uh, and the second work item we have done is uh, about the support of OpenStack client. And actually now user can use both OpenStack uh, command and also sending command to manage uh, the cluster resources. And uh, maybe in one or two cycles, we will deprecate the uh, command line in sending client. Uh, but of course, that will depend on how OpenStack client projects going. And uh, the second, uh, the sorry, the third uh, important job we have done is about uh, uh, sending resource type support in HIT. Uh, actually, this job has been done uh, for about uh, uh, two months, and now all sending resource types have been supported in HIT. Uh, user can define uh, a deployment of HIT, uh, of sending resources uh, using HIT template, uh, and uh, also some example templates. Uh, were added to hit template project and to provide some uh, sample for end user uh, to help them understand how to use the resource types. Uh, the fourth important thing we have done is about uh, HA management, uh, and we actually implemented a preemptive uh, in which the workflow of cluster and node uh, health status check and the recovery uh, uh, is supported, and uh, of course, this is just uh, the first step. We support uh, HA in Selenium, and uh, we will do more jobs in near term cycle uh, to provide more powerful and flexible support here. And uh, the next uh, item is about the documentation. Uh, uh, we have published uh, uh, documentation for both uh, uh, end user and developer, and here I want to thank our PTR team because almost all documentation was. Uh, wrote by himself. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the last one is about Selenium dashboard. Uh, actually, Selenium dashboard provides um, an, you know, more intuitive and easier way for any user to manage uh, cluster resources. This is very important, I think. Okay, in this page, uh, we show some uh, uh, work items we hope to finish in Newtown Cycle. Uh, the first one is about API macro version. Uh, because we believe uh, without this support, any change in the API interface uh, has, a has a risk to break the you know, existing usage uh, of, of users. Uh, so we have to support it. The second one is about enhancing the health management in Selenium. Actually, we need more details. Uh, uh, we need more detailed discussion here. We, we are still not very clear about how to implement it. But uh, uh, this is the important thing we have to finish in new time cycle. And the third one is about container cluster. Uh, actually, this is a very hot topic in OpenStack community now. And we try to use Selenium to you know, manage a container as the first class citizen. Uh, and uh, we're trying to, to make support uh, for container cluster. And actually, there's another session uh, on Wednesday. Uh, and uh, we will make some detailed discussion there. And uh, everybody interested on this topic are welcome to join it. Uh, and the fourth uh, work item is about testing. Actually, we have achieved uh, a good coverage uh, uh, for unit and functional test uh, after medical cycle. And uh, we hope uh, to, to make our test uh, cover more cases. So we plan to add the test case for uh, both API scenario and uh, performance, uh, you know, benchmarking. Uh, this is very helpful to uh, make Selenium more stable and uh, more uh, scalable. Uh, some other work items include uh, additional class operations, which could provide more uh, flexible way and a useful command for end user, and uh, also <coughs> a master queue type of receiver, uh, which you may have introduced that we now support webhook. Uh, and also notifications to other services which can uh, help uh, end user or other OpenStack services who want to talk with Selenium, help them to track the detailed workflow uh, inside Selenium engine. And also batched operations uh, and uh, user-defined uh, actions which is useful for, for application level deployment, I think. And also access control, uh, you know, to, to, to 
control the access to different resources belong to different user or tenants. Okay, uh, after those introduction to Ceiling Project, I think uh, maybe the first question you guys want to ask is, uh, what is the relationship between, between Ceiling and the other OpenStack services? So as we introduced that, uh, Ceiling is, is mainly about uh, managing the collection of, <coughs> uh, a collection of multiple uh, homogeneous resources, uh, which created by other OpenStack services, like uh, a bunch of Nova servers, uh, Cinder volumes, uh, or, or even neutral networks. Uh, so it stays upon other OpenStack open services. Uh, actually, this is similar to HIT. Um, the difference is uh, HIT is more about the combination of uh, different resource types. Uh, so the, the stack conception in HIT is more like the, you know, the, the struct data type in C program language. Uh, language. And uh, by comparison, uh, Cinlin is more like uh, the you know the list or array data type in C programming language. So as we can create a struct of lists uh, as well as a list of struct, user can also create a cluster uh, uh, which consists of multiple uh, hit stacks, uh, and also create a hit stack that contains one or more Cinlin cluster resources. So this is the relationship between. Uh, Cine and other OpenStack projects. Oh, okay, uh, this is the last uh, important information I want to tell you guys that we are actually hiring. Hi hiring, sorry, hiring. Uh, and uh, actually, Cine now has uh, an open uh, ecosystem going forward, and uh, we have a contributor from uh, various companies and organizations, and we talked with other. Uh, you know, uh, OpenStack services, OpenStack projects, and also other open source communities and uh, standard groups. Uh, but uh, we do have a lot of things to complete in Newton cycle. So we need help uh, for, you know, reviews, uh, patches, and uh, blueprints, and uh, uh, bug reports. So uh, very appreciate if any of you guys who have interest uh, interested in this project can join us and we can work together to make Cilin better, to make uh, open source, uh, sorry, OpenStack community better. So uh, that's all. Thank you, you guys. And any questions? So we still have uh, seven or eight minutes. <laughs> It could be. It could be, yes. Um, health management, um, it's just my personal opinion, is a very important uh, feature we, 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 we should leave, uh, deliver in, in, in Sendin. Because without health management, we cannot do auto scaling, those kind of things reliably. But uh, detect node failure, that's a very, very complicated um, uh, field. Um, failures can come from host, the physical node, the VM, network, storage, whatever. Um, so I believe uh, health uh, or failure detection from the application level is out of sending scope. A user. Long term. Yeah, monitoring is out of sending scope. But we do provide hooks. So if you can detect a failure, you tell us. We will try to recover for you. Yeah. The question is about uh, uh, handling compute node failure. Uh, I think there are already some discussions from the OpenStack uh, dev list, uh, if you watch that list. Uh, it is, yes, again, not <laughs> very uh, easy uh, a job. Uh, what we can detect today is Nova Compute Service down. Yeah, if we can get that, um, Basically, you, your VMs running that on that physical node are out of control. So uh, we want to do fencing. 
storage compute and network fencing, followed by some recovery actions you can specify. Yeah, this, um, if it's not that critical failure, maybe just reboot the VMs, maybe rebuild it, maybe evacuate, migrate. Yeah, we we want to um, expose all those options to users. They they know better how to handle those. Uh, uh, failure scenarios. Thanks. Uh, we have two mics, uh, or you can speak uh, louder. Uh, the question is about auto scaling, but uh, Uh, use cases about auto scaling. <laughs> this page. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's VM failure. Is a uh, VM uh, failed, and uh, another one is about um, uh, running out of ser uh, resources. That's a that's a scaling failure. Yeah. Are there are there any requirements on the resources that Senlin manages? Do they have to be item potent or? or I don't even know how that's pronounced, idempotent? Do they have to be stateless or, you know, is there anything in Senlin to help them coordinate as a group? Uh, we don't have any assumptions about the, the resources or the REST APIs. Just tell me how to create a resource, how to update it, how to delete it. That's the only assumption. Hi, I've got a couple of questions about the relationships with other projects. So you've already talked about heat, but what about heat once convergence comes along, which uh -huh. might then be able to tackle the HA case and maybe some of the deficiencies you worry about in auto scaling, and also the relationship with Tacker, which I know is coming from really the telecoms world, but is capable of again auto scaling and auto healing. Okay, uh, the first uh, question is about um, heat convergence. Uh, I don't, although I myself is, is with a heat core team, um, my, my personal understanding about convergence is to make heat operations predictable. Heat uh, really get a good understanding of the situation, about the resources, their status is, um, orthogonal to HA. Uh, HA is completely a different scenario. Uh, uh, that's my, my understanding. Um, the second question about Tiger interaction. Uh, we met uh, the Tiger team back in San Francisco and also Tokyo. And uh, the uh, consensus we have with the Tiger team is they won't duplicate auto scaling in Tiger project. We will spend some time uh, sitting together to figure out how to make this interaction smooth uh, instead of having Tiger again reinventing auto scaling. Thanks. Uh, what about the Senlin API and engine? Are they highly available? It, like, is there any special consideration in how to make them highly available? So that if uh, if something happens to one of those when they're in the middle of doing some clustering operation, that it would still recover. Oh, okay. Uh, this um, currently we have two basic primitives <coughs> uh, uh, related to high availability. One is cluster check. The other one is cluster recover. And the, all the other policy kind of uh, uh, decisions 
is we have not yet considered that. We it's it's too complicated. So that's the only two APIs we we are providing today. But if you want to uh, do something automatically, we do have in our plan to implement kind of a health policy. In that policy, you can specify in this scenario, you want to rebuild your instance. In that scenario, migration may be a better choice. So, sorry, I was actually asking about Senlin itself, making Senlin highly available so that you can rely on Senlin to do the, the workflows that you've configured it to do. Uh, we, I think you can, you can um, uh, apply whatever HA practices uh, you have for the control plan today on OpenStack services. We do have some some um, ideas, some proposals uh, about distributed log management, all those kind of things, uh, but uh, not a very high priority today. Yeah, I'm um, just returning to the earlier question. Um, how can you do auto scaling and also punt? on the app monitoring of the applications. I, I don't see how those two decisions are compatible. Uh, auto scaling you, 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 with? If you don't know the application is running, then you can't say for sure that you have enough copies of it running. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, today when, when a cluster is created by sending, we inject some metadata into the cluster you created. If it's... Um, Nova Server, for example, we inject the cluster ID directly into that Nova Server's metadata. When you are monitoring uh, your, your VM instances using whatever monitoring software, you know what, what those nodes come from. You, you know the instance is, avail is there and running, but you don't know the application inside it is running. If I sorry, I I don't think there will be a generic solution that allows you to monitor what whatever application. It's a very very. So it's, why it's does your project scope. exist? Sorry. So why does your project exist if you're not trying to solve that problem? It's it's uh it's, it's the, knowing the, that the VM is up is not useful. That that doesn't tell you anything about how many copies of a service yeah, you have. I totally agree with you, but uh, uh it's a. Uh, uh, it's out of sending scope. You may want to try Xenometer or Monasca because monitoring itself is a huge beast. Is um, you can use Zapix or whatever uh, monitoring software, but uh, uh, we we don't want to do monitoring by ourselves. Uh, But uh, could Senlin have um, an abstract uh, interface to an application uh, monitor? So, for instance, if I can provide uh, monitoring of my application um, in such a way that it provides a useful characterization for Senlin, could Senlin go ahead and use that? So you don't have to reinvent the monitor. I can, I can give yes, that as uh, part of Yes, we tried stuff. that. We tried that. Um, I think maybe uh, four or five months ago, uh, if you were watching the sending service, we have um, um, an abstraction called alarm. By alarm, it can be a Monasca alarm, Xenometer alarm. Uh, we have some uh, very preliminary implementations supporting those alarms. Then we realized, no. We cannot do that. Xenometer has maybe tens, t 10 types of alarms today, and it's going to A. And uh, Monasca, I believe there are many more types. It makes no sense today f for, uh, to force people to use sending alarm create dash uh, Xenometer type. Why are you doing that? You should use Xenometer directly. But we do what we do 
provide is the receiver side. We provide a webhook URI. You can hook that URI, that webhook, to whatever monitoring uh, software you prefer. Yeah, that's the maybe not a good decision, but that's the current situation. Okay, lo last question. Um, how about how do you scale? Like, how many? Because you're doing polling of the various instances. How many instances have you tried polling in that may manner? Oh, we don't have a large machine in our, in our development environment. So, uh, if you uh, pay uh, notice that we have fake drivers uh, at the driver layer, uh, we s we isolate sending out of OpenStack talking to something dummy. Uh, that API, uh, for example, if you want to create a Nova server, uh, that driver will just return, OK, I cr have created one. So using that kind of um, um, isolation, we are doing a functional test. We can scale to 10,000 nodes very quickly. Yes, uh, if there are scalability issues, we believe it's not sending uh, fault. Well, you are creating quite a fair bit of API traffic. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. That that's one of the feature we want to uh, provide in Newton. Uh, is highl highlighted there as a batch operation. For example, you really don't want to issue 10,000 VM create requests to Nova API. That's a DOS attack. Yeah, that's something we want to control. Thanks. Uh, I, I don't think we have more time uh, for more questions here, but uh, you, 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 can, you can come to us uh, offline. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.